Welcome to the Michiana Business Podcast, where we put local legends and businesses in the spotlight for everyone in our area to see. If you love small businesses and success stories, then you're in the right place. You're listening to the Michiana Business Podcast with your friends, hosts, and owners of industrial office cleaning right here in Michiana, Caitlin and Alonzo Perdomo. So you got you own all the Burtons in the right. area, all right? Why don't you tell us about uh, how that got started? Right. It got started in 1961, which was a long time ago. Wow. My grandfather, his first name was Burton, uh, Burton Sobolski, decided uh, he wanted to get in the laundromat business, and he built a store, a small store, 20 washers, eight dryers, a couple bigger washers uh, at the corner of Bendix and Lincoln Way in uh, on the west side of South Bend, Indiana. Operated that store for uh, 12 or 13 years and then moved down the road a little bit and uh, bought a store that someone had built in the late 60s to uh, run him out of business and they failed. The bank repossessed the <laughs> building and he bought it from the bank and opened up the store three times the size of his original store. Wow. That's awesome. Yeah, and I worked there uh, after school. I went to LaSalle High School, which was just right around the corner and uh, walked over to the laundromat uh, at that point and worked with my mom and my dad over there and it was a family business, started as a family business and continues to this day as a family business. So um, I got out of high school and decided to buy my first store which was actually 1972 which was in the 300 block of East Jefferson Street in Mishawaka, a small store, uh, 16 washers as I remember and 8 dryers. 24-hour store at that time. Um, ran that store for m many years. Uh, in 1976, we purchased uh, another store in River Park, 27th and Mishawaka Avenue in uh, River Park, and uh, operated that store and continue to operate that store today. But I really got going in the business. Uh, unfortunately, my grandfather passed away in 1982, but we continued with the name uh, because of uh, He's the one that started the business in the family, and we wanted to continue with that. So I built my first store uh, from the ground up in 1985, wow. 1500 block of East Jefferson Street in Mishawaka, uh, a little over 4,000 square feet. Um, closed the original store that I bought in 1972, and took that business uh, down there and built my second store in 1986. Uh, Jeff around 12th Street in Mishawaka on the south side of uh, Mishawaka. So business was good and I convinced the people at the bank at that time to give me a few more dollars, my business partner. So then we turned around and we built uh, a store on the south side of uh, Elkhart um, on Lusher Street in 1988. And also then we, we sprawled out just a little bit in, in 1988 and built a store in Auburn, Indiana. My mom and dad then uh, had retired, uh, sold their laundromat on the west side, and moved to Angola, Indiana. My brother lived up in Angola, so we looked at Auburn, which is just south of Angola, about 30 miles. It's a good site to build a laundromat, so we built a store up there in 1988. Uh, turned out to be a pretty good store uh, over time. Uh, but then we, we got we got going on some other things. Uh, 1991, because um, we got out of the business on the west side when my mom and dad sold out. Uh, uh, somebody wanted to buy their building and the price was right, so they sold. I believe that year was 85 or 86, somewhere in there. So we rebuilt on the west side in 1991 uh, on Bendix, just north of Lincoln Way. Uh, still have that store. Uh, 1990. Three, we built a new store in Elkhart on um, Bristol Street. Uh, still have that store, it's an existing store. But the big purchase was in 1997 when uh, existing stores in, in South Bend and Mishawaka, one on Edison, one on Ireland Road, uh, came up for sale. Uh, knew the owners quite well, uh, so we decided to sit down and 
hammer out a good deal for them and a good deal for us and our business partners partners at that time again with the bank and uh, purchase those two complexes uh, Edison and Ireland and all, along with that came the uh, car washes um, there's two two car washes one on each side Parkwood Auto Spa which was part of that package and also in 97 it was an expensive year we also built a store on Lincoln Way West in Mishawaka the last new store we built from the ground up until last year we purchased a uh, older store on Western Avenue in South Bend on the far west side and completely gutted that store uh, completely renovated concrete inside new drains new electric etc etc opened that store in September or so of last year so that's uh, gives us a total of 13 stores and it sold a store in Auburn uh, by the way uh, way back uh, I don't know, it was mid 2000s uh, 2010 or something like that was it just too hard to manage the yeah life? my brother my, my mom and dad moved back to, to Elkhart oh. um, and uh, it, it, it just didn't didn't make sense for us at that time anymore but so now we have 13 stores 13 laundromats uh, for an Elkhart. We also purchased, I guess I forgot the other two in Elkhart. We purchased uh, two existing stores in Elkhart uh, just a little over two years ago and uh, manage those stores and operate those stores under the same name of Burns Laundry nice. and Dry Cleaning. So we got four stores in Elkhart, four stores in Mishawaka, and five stores in South Bend. Um, we enjoy it. Uh, it's, a, it's a challenge every day. But we, as a, as a family business, my son's involved, uh, my son-in-law is involved on the, the day-to-day -day operation, my daughter's involved on uh, office-type work, my wife is the controller for the company and makes all those big decisions in the office. So, so yeah, we, we really enjoy what we do. It's a, it's a good service that we provide. I think we do a pretty good job for the community and there's, there's a need there for, for sure. Definitely. So you have three kids? Yes. Three and my, kids. my other daughter, um, uh, Nicole, uh, runs her own business uh, called The Maids Home Cleaning Service. Nice. Uh, it's owned that for 12, 13 years, I think. Good for her. Like business so, family, for sure. Yeah. Yeah. They, they grew up in the business family. They, they All three of them uh, went to work with Dad from time to time uh, and understood uh, what we needed to do, how we did it. and. Uh, have uh, been involved in businesses since day one. That's awesome. So. My parents have five kids, and they're always, my dad's always saying, that's why we had kids, because, you know, <laughs> helping out with the business and stuff. He's like, why else would anybody have kids? <laughs> so. Well, it, it seems like it, uh, now it's starting to be, because I guess I'm getting just a little bit older there, uh, that they're doing the things that uh, I don't want to do anymore. Yeah. So I'm, I'm being a little more selective on what, uh, how much, how much hard work I want to do. Not that I don't mind hard work, but, uh, you know, as you get a little older, you kind of slow down a little bit on the, the harder things. And there's there's plenty to do. So Absolutely. And that's a good thing about having a business is you get to kind of, you're able to pick and choose, you know, mm -hmm. if you can't do things or you don't want to do things anymore, then yep. good for you. Yep. <laughs> awesome. All right. So you said that your grandpa, you always would go down to the store that your grandpa started. Um, is that, that's just basically you kind of had a passion for it from then on? Well, you know, back in the day, you know, in the 60s, uh, this, this business was a very, very good business as far as, profit uh, you could buy equipment uh, a little bit cheaper back then of course things have changed I, I remember and I actually still have the the original invoice from my grandfather's store that he built in 61 uh -huh. that's and, so cool and and the invoice for all the stuff including hot water heaters and water storage tank and softener washers dryers baskets was a little over fourteen thousand dollars at that time wow yeah, and we just in this Western Avenue store that I talked about, we put three 90-pound washers in, which are gigantic washers. Mm -hmm. One of those washers, one washer, cost us a little over seventeen thousand oh dollars. So <laughs> we have more money invested in one washer than my grandfather had invested in the whole store. The entire store. <laughs> so, so things have changed, but the technology has changed, and uh, you pay a little bit more for that, etc. And granted, you know, we're charging more than what he charged back then per pound to, to wash your clothes. But uh, the profit's not quite as strong as it used to be. But it's, it's still a good business. 
you know, the only way that, uh, to do this right in, in this type of business anymore, not just in South Bend, Indiana, but you know, around the country and probably around the world, is uh, in order to, to, to be profitable, you have to have more than one store. Yeah. Uh, all the things that, that go in uh, combined from repair and maintenance to office, etc. You have to have more than one location. So we're, we're quite uh, lucky uh, to have what we have, uh, and we continue to, to look for other sources. Uh, uh, there's a store or two out there that uh, we may be looking at here down the line. Good for you. That's awesome. Um, have you, and I, I hadn't thought of this until just now, but what is the main difference? Um, I mean, there's obviously big differences, but like, how do you feel about the washer and the dryers today as opposed to old school like not the high efficient stuff like do you are, do they are they pretty good is that what you use how well back in the day uh, you had a choice of warm hot or cold everything else in the cycle was the same mm -hmm. uh, today's world you know, the, the equipment that we buy you know, has computers on it you can adjust the price uh, a top load washer uh, I can charge a basic cost for for a cold wash, I can charge a little bit more for a warm wash, I can charge a little bit more for a hot wash, so the customer's paying for what they're getting. Back then, you couldn't do that. On the bigger washers, uh, there's many selections on different cycles because it all is run by a computer these days. And the high efficiencies, which you, which you spoke of, uh, it, it's, it's the way uh, that things are anymore. You have to be able to be efficient because the water bill and the sewer bill are just running right out of business. But an example, uh, we just replaced um, a row of 27 pound washers in a store uh, that I, at one point, there was, five, there was five in the store that we just took out. At one point, that same model, I had about 85 of these machines. Um, so all those, this is the last five of this batch that was bought around 2000. And that washer, a 27 pound washer, complete cycle used about 80 gallons of water wow. and the machine that we put in to replace it was a 30 pound machine and that machine uses about 40 gallons of water wow. so it's, it's the efficiency that counts but with the water and sewer especially the sewer end of it uh, just just going out of sight you have to be efficient or you, you won't be in business uh, so we, we bought some some good efficient equipment over the last 10 years to replace some of these, as I call them, gas hogs. <laughs> but, uh, they're really water hogs, but uh, uh, you, you have to. Uh, you have to. You have to maintain it. And there is some savings on the electric end uh, because the efficiency of the motors, but more importantly, the water savings. Uh, prices went up because they know that you're saving money, so it gives them an opportunity to charge more money, which is fine. Mm -hmm. That's that's how that, that circle works. Uh, but we have, uh, the last count was a little over 1,200 pieces of equipment oh, wow. of washer, dryers, and heaters. Uh, and most of our stuff, uh, we've, we've been lucky enough, uh, fortunate enough to replace with, with high efficiency stuff. Uh, we still got a little bit to do, but I would say probably 85, maybe 90% of what we have is high efficiency equipment. Awesome. Good. Well, that's great. Yeah. It sounds like it actually is better, too, you know? Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. Bills and things. Yeah. <laughs> so that's good. Um, all right, so what, in your opinion, is the best part of being a business owner? Well, there's a lot of good, but there's, a, <laughs> there's as any business owner would tell you, that, that, that owning your own business is, is you have the luxury of uh, getting up when you want to and going home when you want to, taking off early if you want to, uh, etc. Uh, and, and I have that luxury. Uh, but I get up early every morning. I'm usually the first one to work at, the, at our shop. Sometimes the last one to leave, uh, but I enjoy that. This is not only my job; it's my hobby. Uh, my hobby is is, is my customers, uh, my passion for the business to do it right, my employees. Uh, sometimes it's going into a store. My job may only take 15 minutes, but it, maybe I'll spend a half hour there because I talk to customers. Uh, and you get involved in the political end of it, of talking to different people, and everybody has an opinion, and you have to listen to those. But I enjoy that. I, yeah. I'm not a golfer. Uh, <laughs> my my hobby my hobby is my business. Uh, but that, that I enjoy it. I, I really truly That's enjoy good. it. That's yeah. awesome. Good. All right. Um, how about as for everybody out there that's listening? Do you have like any specials that you guys run ever? Um, 
you know, gift cards, that sort of thing that maybe they might want to know about? You know, it, it, we've tried different things over the years, um, and it gets so complicated that we, we try to stay away from that. Uh, we, we are going to be installing a program uh, in all the stores uh, to uh, give away a big screen TV oh, cool. like once a month, a drawing you know, for like a 12 month period. Uh, and that brings people in and gets them excitement in the store, etc., etc. But I'm going to start that this fall and then once a month, first of every month, give away a, a big screen uh, TV. And we did that. Um, here a year or so ago, well, two years ago now probably, we needed to find uh, our demographics uh, at, at a couple different of our, uh, of our laundromats, find out where, where this customer base was exactly coming from. Um, so in order to get people to fill something out, you got to give something away. So we gave away TV and uh, it, was, it, was, uh, it, was, it was good for us. We, we learned a lot. We thought we knew kind of where everything was coming from, but come to find out that there was a couple areas there that uh, we didn't think about that people filled the cards out so we know where they're coming from. So uh, that's always always fun to do and exciting to say, et cetera. So we're gonna do that in the stores uh, coming up. Uh, you know, the fortunate part is that we own probably 80, 82% of the market in mm -hmm. South Bend, Mishawak, and Elkhart. And my competition is really not other laundromats because there's not many left. My biggest competition is losing that customer to the apartment complex or losing that customer to where they go down to rent a center and rent a washer and dryer or even buy a washer and dryer. So we have to do a good job. We don't want to force them out of the store uh, for bad service, uh, machines not running correctly, or you know, out of out of touch machines that are just junk, so to speak. So that's why we try to do a better job. I, I, the competition is losing the customer to, to, to home um, or the apartment complex. We need to make it convenient, fast, efficient, etc. Yeah, that makes so, sense. Yeah. I had never thought about that. That's interesting. Yeah, that's uh, well. In, in a lot of cities, your competition is another store. Yeah. Uh, but you know, when I when I own most of the market, um, that's not the competition. And when you lose a customer because of poor service and they just had enough of the bad service, et cetera, and, so, and once in a while we do, you know, and, and we have to correct that and we, we try to do a good job on that. But they buy a washer and dryer, <laughs> they're gone for a while because they're going to stay at home and use the washer and dryer they just bought. Right. So it's important to, to operate every day, every week, every month, like it's your first day and you, and you need to continue with that in the right direction. And, and I, I think in most cases we do a pretty good job. That sounds like it. I mean, that's you sound like you're doing awesome. So good, very good. Um, I would say, well, um, what would be the pros of sticking with a laundromat instead of um, buying a washer or dryer? Well, so I kind of threw that one at you. <laughs> yeah, if you if you have two children, let's say, uh, and you have to do your laundry once a week because you, you work, you come home, you, you eat, you clean up, and by that time it's too late to maybe wash and dry. If, if you have to do your laundry with, with, with a household of four or five people, you're probably looking at four or five loads of laundry uh, every week. So either you're washing all day Saturday or you're washing and drying all day Sunday. You know, with the, with the technology and some of the equipment that we have in, in, in a lot of the stores now, uh, the wash cycle is about 25 minutes. In the dry cycle, our dryers are hotter than the home dryer. Home dryers is usually about 130 to 140 degrees. Our dryers on high, high heat is 160 or so. Wow. So it'll, they'll wash faster, and obviously we have more than one washer. You have one washer, one dryer. Yeah. Uh, you can get in, you can wash them, you can dry them, you can fold them. In a lot of cases, you're, you're on your way home within an hour, hour and 10 minutes. That's so, and, and, and Everybody's in a hurry these days. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I went to the grocery store the other day, and it's just amazing the amount of sweet corn that's already 90% clean. Yeah. And you buy it, you know, five in a package at Martin's, and all you got to do is just peel off the rest of it on the bottom, throw in the water, and you're done. And <laughs> if they're buying that sweet corn left and right, and you know, Martin's has groceries to go, you don't even have to shop anymore. Uh, yeah. It's it's just it, time is the most important thing in people's lives anymore. So when you can 
wash your clothes and dry your clothes uh, one week if you have enough clothes to, to go two weeks uh, every two weeks and you can spend an hour hour and 20 minutes to, to from in the door out the door you have all that extra time to do all those extra things right now obviously not a lot you can do extra things but uh, uh, time like you said even just if you have a couple of kids you know that's a lot of time that you're saving and you can yep. just hang out with your kids yeah. at the park or whatever if you're really really in a crunch you know we offer a drop-off laundry service wow. where you can just bring it in drop it off and we'll do it for you pick it up the next day or even sometimes the same day depending on how busy they are uh, so the drop off yeah the so. drop off service uh, is is probably about on average about 15% of our business wow. which That's is awesome. yeah it's it's really relatively high uh, higher than what most people would think i would absolutely take advantage yeah. of that if it were me yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. awesome yeah. good then, for you and then uh, did even take that to the next step uh, sometime in the next probably four to six months, we're gonna launch a uh, pickup and delivery service. Oh, wow. So now all you gotta do is put it in a bag, put it on the porch, we're gonna come get it for you. Wow. And we're gonna wash it, dry it, and we're gonna bring it back for you. That has really, really taken off around the country, especially in bigger cities. Uh, and uh, we just did a uh, conference call here this, this last week uh, with other owners that have tried this. and. Uh, it's becoming a very, very large portion of, of their business. There was a guy in Philadelphia that I actually flew up to Philadelphia to look at his laundry equipment here about a month ago now. And he had a real nice laundromat, uh, ha has had the store for about 10 years. And uh, getting out of the self-serve business, self-serve being customers that come in and do it themselves. Uh, and the reason why he's getting out of the self-serve business is because his home pickup and delivery service has blown off the charts. <laughs> wow. He doesn't want to deal with the people that come in on a, on a daily basis because he doesn't need to because right. he's doing three times of what that business did prior wow. to and growing every week. So I don't know if that will happen in South Bend, Indiana, but we're going to do it. There's, there's, there's a market out there and just look at the market of these grocery stores. Exactly. That, you know, we'll, we'll take it off the shelf, we'll bag it for you, all you got to do mm -hmm. is pull in and my daughter-in-law has tried that because they have four children, and it's difficult to take four children into oh, the yeah. grocery store. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, uh, but they, one time she tried, and it was a two-day wait. I mean, because <laughs> they, wow. they were that busy. Oh my gosh! So, you know, I don't want to say people have gotten lazy, but people people's time is important. Yeah. And uh, that's why I think this pickup and delivery laundry service uh, will work. Uh, to what degree, time will tell. But. Uh, we got a couple things we need to get in place. We wanted to launch it this spring, and then obviously this spring didn't turn out to be a very good spring for anybody. And uh, so as time goes forward, we'll, we'll get that launched. Awesome. That's super exciting. Yes, good yeah, for it you. Is. Yes, it is. That's great. Um, all right, how about hours of operation? What do you guys usually run? Uh, three of our stores, the store at um, Edison, Ireland, and Bristol Street in Elkhart, uh, 7.30 to 10 p.m. Last wash is 8.30. That way they can be out of there by 10 p.m. All the rest of the stores are 8 a.m. to 9 p.m. with the last wash at 8 o'clock, uh, seven days a week. Uh, we're only closed on a couple holidays, limited, limited hours on the, what we call the minor holidays, 4th of July, Labor Day, etc. But we're closed on Thanksgiving, so our our family of employees can spend it with their families. We're closed on Christmas, we're closed on Easter. And we give them options if they want to work on the other small holidays. Uh, but usually people want to work and it's never been a problem of, of staffing the stores. Always Great. Stores are always staffed 100%. We don't have any uh, uh, stores that are uh, unattended. There's always something that the attendant uh, can do and should do and will do. Uh, but we, we run uh, attended stores to, for customer service. Great, that's awesome. Um, all right. Anything else you want anybody, everybody to know? No. Like, uh, hobbies was one question that was brought oh, yeah. up. And what's, up what, uh, what kind of hobbies, hobbies do I have? And uh, my hobbies, uh, number one priority probably is, is family. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, number two is, along with family, is our, our seven grandchildren. Uh, so Good. Congratulations. You know, the oldest <laughs> almost almost ten, the youngest almost mm -hmm. two. So they're right in that, that right age group to to enjoy and have fun. That's awesome. Uh, and then uh, uh, after that, it's just you know the business itself. I, I really truly enjoy uh, 
going to work. Uh, you know, I've asked several times, oh, you got to retire, you got to retire. And, you know, I've, I've somewhat retired already because I somewhat do every, whatever I want to do every day, and along with the work, obviously. But uh, yeah. I enjoy it. I mean, I grew up with it, and uh, I enjoy the, the, the challenges every day. Yeah, there's some bad days. Don't misunderstand. Okay. You know, we had a situation at one of our stores here about uh, six, seven weeks ago where a dryer caught fire. Oof. And uh, oh yeah, when, the, when I pulled up, and there was already six fire trucks there, it uh, wasn't a pleasant sight, but uh, Tenda did what she was trained to do, and uh, the damage was minimal. We were closed for about three days and uh, got the store back open. And uh, But, uh, yeah, that was a bad day. So, But everybody okay. has bad days, but yep. uh, you have to look at the glass half full, not half empty. Uh, every day is a good day, and that's the way, I, the, way, the way we operate. Awesome. It's great to have that mindset, always positive. Got so. to. Got yep, to. exactly. All right, favorite book? Don't read. You don't read? <laughs> Neither do I. Yeah. That's so well, exciting. <laughs> I, I, I still believe this or not, and I'm probably one of the only ones I think that I know, I still read the newspaper. I oh, still take cool. the newspaper and read the newspaper. And, and I come to learn to read the newspaper online, uh, too, because uh, there's some stuff that's breaking news, etc. But uh, still read the newspaper. But uh, I can't remember the last book I read from cover to cover. It was probably 15 years ago, maybe on vacation. And, uh, got involved in a book. Probably something that maybe had to do with John F. Kennedy. I was a oh, big, okay. big Kennedy fan, still am. Nice. Uh, but he's uh, not a lot of reading going on. So. Okay, good. well, hey, <laughs> <laughs> you got a lot of other things to do anyway. Yeah, so. true, true. <laughs> good. How about your favorite restaurant? You know, it depends. Uh, depends on uh, quick, uh, cheap, so to speak, not high dollar. Uh, Barnaby's Pizza in Mishawaka. Yeah. You know, so you know that's uh, that's probably our spot. Uh, we really like pizza, and and uh, you know, pizza is, is good. Uh, but then, high dollar wise, uh, I, I just just was there last Friday night, and that's uh, Ruth Chris. Oh, nice. Uh, uh, high dollar, but uh, the pre presentation's excellent. Uh, the food is always excellent. But we don't go there real often, maybe twice a year. Yeah. <laughs> so, I've never been, so I've heard I, it's good, though. Yeah, I get a little conservative, too, and uh, but uh, usually, you know, special occasions, very special occasions. Yeah. Uh, but uh, it, it's, 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 a, it's a good place. Awesome. So. Good. All right. Barnaby's is oh, one of yeah. my favorite. And, and I know Mike Lane real well, the, the owner there. And me and Mike go back a long ways, and Mike, Mike does a good job there. And uh, uh, always, always professional, always, always good. Awesome. And then that's the one on Grape Road, or is that yeah, the one? Yeah, one, okay. on, one on Grape Road, Grape and Edison. Okay, yeah. good. Awesome. All right. Well, if you don't have anything else, thank you so much for coming well, on. Well, you're welcome. Thank you. I appreciate yeah. the time. Yep. Um, if you're out there and you're a business owner or you just love businesses and you love Michiana, um, check us out on our website, michianabusinesspodcast.com. There's a calendar there. You can go in and sign up for a time slot if you'd like to sit down with us and share your story. Um, we'd be really excited to talk to you. So thanks for tuning in. Thank you. If you're in the Michiana area and would like to have us put your business or story out there for everyone to hear, sign up at michianabusinesspodcast.com. Until next time, thanks for listening.